Hey friends, welcome to my debut live stream on the YouTube mobile app recording on my Android phone. And excuse me while I adjust the phone so I can hit all the little uh, parameters here on the bottom of the screen. Like, let's see, I'm going to start us off with bubbles here because that was one of my favorite ones. Let's just get bubbles going on there. And I am also going to adjust my tripod here. I just picked up a Targus Grifton Pro XL tripod today. Um, talk about that here just in a sec. But first, I want to make it so I don't see the legs of the tripod. So let's just adjust that. There we go without tipping the whole shooting match over. <laughs> that is the challenge. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There was another cool uh, effect here. I want to show you guys. Um, Going through the different effects here that the YouTube mobile app here has got the sketch app here, you know, the sketch effect here. That's pretty awesome, especially on artwork. <laughs> Almost looks better than the uh, artwork I created. Let's see, this one's also cool. It's like an, a reverse and re effect called haunt. And let's see, eight millimeter. So cool dance party. Now I recently was trying to upload this to YouTube, but when I finished my live stream, I pressed the wrong button or something and the whole thing deleted. So I'm gonna try not to screw this up this time because I just did a 40 minute stream that disappeared into the ether. What I've got going on here, I was just doing some ink drawing here but before I get into that, I'll tell you my setup here doing an Android live stream because I've been getting some comments on my channel recently, like what external microphone do I use recording on an Android phone? And right now I'm recording on the onboard Android mic. I'm not using this external mic right here. Oh man, the damn app just crashed again. So yeah, so one thing I'm not liking about this live streaming business on the phone is that the app crashes and it re it's always reconnecting with either my Wi-Fi or with YouTube servers. I don't know, but it can be a little bit frustrating. I don't know. If you guys experience that, post your comments below. So I do use a lapel mic in the Android occasionally, but it must have a tip ring ring sleeve connection. See the three black lines right there? It's got to be tip ring ring sleeve, not tip ring sleeve. And that works pretty well. The quality is better than the onboard mic, but the onboard mic is good if you're close up to the phone, I'm finding, and if you're not in the wind or if you're not in a really echoey room. It, it will pick up the echo quite significantly, but I'm just using the onboard mic tonight. But yes, I do use the external mic. Uh, for close-up stuff like this in the past, um, for a couple of years, I've used a couple of these different Joby tripods, both of which have broken these plastic housing because the balls crack, and then this thing is really unstable and really loose. So just today, I'm rolling this out for the first time tonight. I'm actually using this Targus Gripton Pro XL flexible tripod. It's considerably larger than this small thing. You can see right there by, I'd say, about three inches. So the Gripton has got to be about, I don't know, eight inches tall at least. And I'm really liking the... Um, adjustments on the Gripton. It's definitely more rugged. I've read some negative reviews about the Gripton. Um, however, I think that's as being tippy, but I think that's mostly for large cameras. As far as the phone goes, I just think it's working out great. 
Also, if you guys have any tips on picking up a decent um, adapter for my tripod, or some people call them Octoplus tripods, because I'm using one on the camera right now that's more rugged than this cheap Joby. Again, Joby's components, I, I think, are kind of cheap. Um, this plastic housing in there cracked, or plastic uh, pivot area, if you will. So you can see how that's flanging downward, and then the foam drops out. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, but anyhow, I'd like to get a more rugged adapter. So if you've got any comments for that, I would appreciate it in the comments section. So that's pretty much what I have going on as far as setting up my Android for close-up stuff. And, um, you know, keeping it low cost, low budget. I've had this channel since about 2013. And, you know, that's just kind of my role. In the meantime, excuse me while I shift over the phone a little bit here. So... I have a pretty small phone with, um, I think I'm, I think my phone right here has about a four and a half inch screen. Yeah, I think it's, I'm not sure, four or four and a half. And I can already tell, like, if I were to get, just going to adjust this tripod, if I were to get into the streaming thing more, I think I definitely want a larger phone um, screen size because touching the uh, touch menu on the YouTube mobile app is really finicky and that's how I screwed up my last live stream So earlier today, I was just going over some of my pens and brushes and all that stuff But I think I'll just kind of point to this uh, pen and ink drawing I did here I was using Speedball Super Black India ink with a little bit of the Speedball Super Pigmented Acrylic, which dulls the India ink because this is really glossy and the Super Pigmented Acrylic reduces that kind of veneer glossy finish. And that's what I get here. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. You know, I'm just a real amateur with using a brush. But I do like it. You know, it's more of that kind of old school process my previous stream that just got deleted i went on for about 20 minutes about the digital world versus old school analog materials and pens and paper and real instruments as opposed to everything digital and that was a whole discussion but i guess again that's lost in the ether if you'd like to weigh in in the comment section about your thoughts about the uh, digital versus analog world. I was talking about it in terms of doing like artwork the old-fashioned way as opposed to digital in response to a question I left on uh, It's either Marco or Mario Bucci's channel. He's an amazing artist and um, I asked him about uh, professionally do artists fare better um, doing analog painting and drawing or digital and he said definitely digital so it kind of just spurred my thinking about why I like to play around with the pens and the papers and stuff being a hobbyist I find it very meditative and I just love uh, finding new materials and I in my fountain pen I use a combination of Higgins fountain pen India ink which resolves to a gray color in combination with a Kohinoor fountain pen ink which resolves to a blue color and that's this kind of stuff I'm gonna loosen up my tripod here and pan you over here see this tripod is really cool for panning over pretty smoothly but you can see some of my uh, just fountain pen examples and in some of the uh, I, I love to play around and make notes about different materials I'm using and I do that all the time <laughs> I'm always comparing different stuff and I think that's part of the fun because you know for just a few dollars especially like with eBay getting stuff from China um, this hobby is well I mean it can get expensive if you start collecting pens like crazy like I do <laughs> but before I leave here, I'm going to show you some artwork that I've done um, with ballpoint pens. That's one cool thing I want to definitely get on this stream before I leave. 
and I use a Bic Crystal 1.6 millimeter pen. Bic calls many of their pens Crystal, but the real Crystals have 1.6 millimeter. They're much bolder than your traditional Bic pen. And uh, ballpoint pen is oil based. So the ink sits on top of the paper and you can start off with really light touch nuances to build up your drawing. And these are some ballpoint pen drawings that I like to do, just sketching around town, throwing in this small sketchbook in my pocket. And it, it's just a lot of fun. Now compare that to a rollerball drawing. You can see a little bit of the difference there. The rollerball and fountain pen and, and India ink as well all soak into the paper. They don't stay on top of the paper the way that ballpoint pen does. So different effects with different um, materials. Here's another ballpoint pen with a crystal 1.6 millimeter uh, pen. Really fun to work with. The advantage of the ballpoint pen is that you can start off very lightly and work up your drawing to the darker, uh, more bold lines. Whereas with any of the uh, felt or fountain pens, I mean, just like the Pigma Graphic One pen, for example, as soon as you put a line down, there's really no going light about it. Like that line is there. And by contrast, sketching with a ballpoint pen is you can go in lighter. I'll get it going here. You can go in lighter with a really light touch. And then, you know, you can go in heavier. So that way you can work up your drawing as it were. And it's more forgiving basically. Um, so it's just fun to have different materials on hand. Um, thanks for joining this stream. It doesn't seem like anyone has, well, I think maybe one or two people tuned in previously. My other stream had up to three people. So that was pretty cool, but I'm going to post this anyway on my channel, keeping it to about 13 minutes here. If you have any, uh, comments about anything I've discussed here this evening regarding pens or analog versus digital or setting up your phone for live streaming or just, you know, getting a channel going uh, with video production on the cheap, please post your comments below. Oh, and also personal grooming stuff. I'm always looking for good stuff to use on a personal grooming level. And you guys, thanks for tuning into my channel as always. See you next time.